In this video I'm going to show you how to get some interactive input from the user and then I'm going to show you a way to make it easier to do that in the future. First of all the program that we have so far I've run with different outputs but only by changing a variable value and then recompiling. Naturally, we can't expect to do that every time we want to run a program, and we certainly shouldn't expect our users to be programmers who know how to recompile. So instead of changing this 50 or 500, why don't I prompt it from the user? To get data from the user requires a very specific and funny syntax. Don't worry about every letter that I'm typing. Uh, some of this you can just copy boilerplate. So J option pane, capital J, capital O, and then lowercase p, t, i, o, n, uppercase p, a, n, e, dot show input dialog and you see we have a few different options here uh, I'll just go with one called message and I'll say how far do you want to go okay and then terminate with the semicolon let's make sure this runs uh, let's just see what happened so far so run file okay now take a look at what came up with that J option pane show input dialog do you see where the how far do you want to go went went up here has a little question mark there and it has a place for me to type some information so I could say 10 and choose OK but surprisingly it says I ran out of gas now why is that because we're taking this data from the user but we're not doing anything with it so we need to take the data from the user we need to assign it to a variable so I can say string distance equals J option pane uh, oops looks like I already have distance defined so string uh, journey equals J option pane dot show input dialog how far do you want to go now we have to take the string and we have to push it into this distance variable but we're gonna find it's not as easy as we might think because there are two different types so I can't just magically make a string and int it will say incompatible types so if I have a string and a string is the only thing I can get from a J option pane by the way so we have to start with a string if I have a string which is just character data and that string contains a number and I want to store that number as an int type not a string type I have to do a conversion the conversion looks like this integer dot parse int and then inside of those parentheses the string that I want to convert be very careful here when you're looking at this because capitalization is very important uppercase I on integer uppercase I on parse int now let's try our program again I save and I'm going to run the file and let's see what happens when I say I want to go let's go with 100 miles I should consume four gallons of gas I should have six left over sure enough four gallons of gas consumed and six left over given that I started with 10 and I have miles per gallon of 25 let's try again with a bigger number let's try 1000 with 1000 it should tell me I'm out of gas because 1000 divided by 25 is 40 and I'm only starting with 10 gallons of gas okay so we know J option pane show input dialog that's how we get data from the user but the trick is that is a really funny syntax and I've taught intro Java for many many years taught large classes and small classes and uh, just the way that humans tend to learn things if I type this out inevitably about 10 percent of the students who are watching will will just make a simple mistype uh, maybe miscapitalize an O or something like that so let me show you something now that's a little tricky but it will save you a lot of time and frustration while you're learning Java I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to go to options under options I go to uh, code templates and I choose new abbreviation I type J-O-P why J-O-P because that's a shortcut for this template we'll come back to that in just a moment but go ahead and choose okay and now inside of this box down below I'm going to say J option pane dot show input dialog open paren close paren terminate with the semicolon once again it has to be exactly what I'm showing you here capital J capital O uh, capital I capital D everything else lowercase a period between pane and show open and close paren and terminate with the semicolon what that means is anytime I press J O P and then hit the tab key it's going to auto complete with what you see here now we can make it even one step better if I go inside the curly and say dollar sign or go inside the paren and say dollar sign open curly cursor close curly 
And we'll I'll tell you, we'll even put that in quotes, why not? What that means is not only is it going to print all of this out when I type J-O-P and tab, but it's going to put my cursor between the parentheses. And why is that? Well, if we take a look at our J-Option pane, look what's between the parentheses, what we want to tell the user. So it not only gives us all of this typing, but it also puts our cursor in the one place where we're likely to change something. I could even say string input equals J option pane show input dialog, and then it's even going to make that variable assignment as well. So I can take this as far as I wish. I'll tell you what, for the moment, let's just keep it J option pane show input dialog, and now I'm going to choose OK. OK, so let's try some magic here. Let's see if our shortcut works. Uh, let's say JOP, and now watch, I'm going to choose tab, and boom, take a look at that. And now we'll say how many miles per gallon does the vehicle get. Okay, now we can save that to a string miles per gallon equals Japs and Paint Show Input Dialog, just like so. Now for MPG, we can say, guess what? Integer dot parse int miles per gallon. One note, do you see how the string I called miles per gallon and the int I called MPG, the string I called journey here, the int I called distance, variable names have to be unique. It's really tempting to call it string MPG and then call it int MPG down here, but you can't do that because they're two different variables, so they have to have two different parking spaces. Let's try our program one more time. Now, by the way, that shortcut doesn't change how our program runs. It only makes it faster for us to write the program. So I choose run file. How many miles per gallon does the vehicle get? 20. How far do you want to go? 100. So that should consume five gallons of gas. And sure enough, gas consumed five, gallons remaining five. So that's how to get input from a user. There's much more to go with JOption Pane, but this will at least get us off to a good start. We'll explore the other features in JOption Pane in a future video. Thank you.